Okay, y'all. So, let's talk about Fort Mose. Fort Mose is in what is now known as the state of Florida. It's about two miles north of St. Augustine, Florida. Um, and we're going to call it Spanish Florida for the sake of this video because what happened at Fort Mose happens at the end of the 1600s, beginning of the 1700s, okay? So we're calling it Spanish Florida because the United States is not established yet. It's still known as the New World which means that Great Britain, France, Spain, and a bunch of other European countries are fighting for the land in the new world, right? And Spain, along with King Charles II of Spain, have just acquired what we're going to call Spanish Florida. So, King Charles II acquired Spanish Florida and he realizes in the new world that, hey, pretty much everything that's happening as far as making money and uh, transporting, all of that is coming from slaves. So how can I get this black labor without making them slaves, right? So he releases what's called the Edict of 1693. And it pretty much states that he's not going to help to free slaves. But if you're a runaway slave and you make it to Spanish Florida land, he would pretty much set you free. You would be considered a free person, right? So, um, of course, there were slaves who were scared. They didn't want to do it because, you know, you could possibly die, pretty much. And a lot of slaves did die trying to get their freedom. Let me just make that clear. But a lot of slaves also made it and became free. And that's a whole nother lesson in itself about how there's freedom on the other end of fear. But we're talking black history. So I'll stick to the topic, okay? <laughs> so a lot of slaves get their freedom, right? 1738 comes and Fort Moe's name is officially established as Fort Moe's, right? So, while there are a lot of slaves um, who are still in captivity who are hearing about Fort Mose, there are a lot of free black men and women. Let me also state that uh, King Charles II, um, he made this land available for runaway slaves. But it was under the stipulation that you had to join the Spanish militia. You also had to convert from Christianity um, and become Catholic. So that was his um, two main rules that he had set. And I don't think that, you know, they had any issues with that. They just wanted to be free. Not only were they free uh, when they got there, they weren't doing labor like picking cotton they were learning carpentry and working in stores and you know basically just learning trades and not just learning to pick cotton and say yes massa and be scared of white people pretty much and the cool part about it also was spanish florida was pretty much like a melting pot um, there were white people there who felt that, you know, black people should be free. They should just work like everyone else. There were also Indians who were there. Um, and there were Spaniards, of course. Um, but they were all working next to each other. They were all part of the Spanish militia. They were working next to each other, you know, just living day by day. And it was awesome. But, you know, where there's also awesomeness. There's a hater somewhere in the distance, you know, just watching and plotting. And that's pretty much what the English people were doing. They were watching and plotting. And in 1740, 
they invaded Spanish Florida. They cut off all of the ports um, where goods were being shipped out of, exported and imported from to Spanish Florida. They cut off all of those ports and they raided into Spanish Florida, specifically Fort Mose and St. Augustine. And they did this for 27 days straight with the idea that they were just going to go in and every black person that they came in contact with, if they didn't kill them, they were gonna take them back to the Carolinas or wherever they were on what we know now as the Bible Belt. They were gonna steal them back and put them back into slavery. So the African Americans who came over with the Spanish people when they acquired Spanish Florida, if they happen to run into one of these militiamen or soldiers, whatever we want to call them, one of these English soldiers while this raid was happening and the soldier was able to capture them, these people were now slaves if they didn't die on the way back to wherever the soldiers took them. Imagine being free and then being caught and turned into a slave. It's just, wow. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> the English are invading Fort Mose, okay? They're invading Fo Fort Mose and this is going on for 27 days and they acquire the fort. Uh, they're able to win Fort Mose, but only for a couple of days though, because um, Captain Francisco Mendez, who was over the Spanish militia, he was able to recapture the fort. And once he recaptured the fort, um, they were able to push out the English people um, enough to where, you know, they pretty much ceded and went back home. And, you know, it didn't come without them pretty much ruining the fort ruining the area but it was able to be rebuilt and actually spanish florida stayed spanish florida for quite a long time after and it stayed that safe haven for fugitive slaves who wanted to run away and be free it also stayed that safe area uh, for black people just in general who wanted that freedom now, I will note that in 1763, East Florida ceded to uh, Britain in what they call the Peace of Paris, and pretty much the rest of Spanish Florida ceded not too long after that. Most of the Blacks migrated to Cuba with the Spaniards when they left. Um, it doesn't really say what happened to the ones who decided to stay. I'm honestly not sure why they decided to stay, but they did. And um, we do know that slavery became way more prevalent and Spanish Florida turned into Florida, which we know then turned into the Bible Belt. Um, so we can only wish and hope that, you know, eventually they did decide to go to Cuba with their allies. And if not, then they lived prosperous lives. I can't really tell you. I couldn't find what happened to them, the ones who decided to stay. But yes, that is the end of this video. Uh, the rest of the videos will be full face. Um, this one, like I said, is just special because there's going to be two videos in one month. Um, this one I'm going to post. And then at the end of the month, there will be another one which will show the other half of my face that will give you more history because not only do Black Lives Matter, all Black Lives Matter, Black Trans Lives Matter, Black Gay Lives Matter, and you don't have to agree with what a person does or their lifestyle, but I think that we can all agree that they're human and they're supposed to be our brothers and sisters and we're supposed to stand for them. And of course, you know, I couldn't end this video without saying, Arrest the cops that murdered Breonna Taylor. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. And I learned a lot. And I'm excited to learn new things with you.